Moving on to the second tensor, which will be of importance in dynamics, this is a skew symmetric tensor, which is defined to be simply a tensor which is the negative of its transpose. Such a tensor is also called an anti-symmetric tensor. I will stick with the nomenclature skew symmetric tensor. Clearly, if a tensor is the negative of its transpose, the diagonal terms must be zero. No matter which coordinate system I choose to write the matrix of W in. The other thing that you will notice is that the remaining non-zero terms are actually mirror images of each other. Well, negative mirror images, I guess. Okay. So, if you count the number of independent components in the matrix of W in any coordinate system, you will simply get 3. There will only be 3 independent components for W, no matter which coordinate system you choose. Which other object do I know which has 3 independent components in any coordinate system? It is a vector. So, therefore, what we are saying is that every skew symmetric tensor is equivalent to some vector small w. Okay. So, now what we have with us is that if we pick any coordinate system E with let us say origin O and unit vectors capital EI, then W has independent components W12, W13, W23 and small w has independent components w1, w2, w3. So, we have to relate this set with that set and there are many ways to do it. Okay. We, will have, we have to choose a convenient way. So, how do we choose that? Okay, the way we do it is that first we say that since these two are equivalent in simply by counting, that means that any operation of capital W on any vector which gives me a vector B must be the same if I was to, since capital W is equivalent to small w, if I take the vector small w and operate it in some way on the vector A, it must also give me B. What is an operation which gives between two vectors which gives me a vector? You will agree the most natural operation is the cross product. Okay. And that is the main property of a skew symmetric tensor is that given a skew symmetric tensor, it is always possible to find a associated vector small w so that the operation of, w, of the skew symmetric tensor on any vector is actually just the cross product of the associated vector. Okay. But as I said, there are many ways to do this mapping and the mapping which leads to this particular definition is this, okay, which is and uh, this is spelt out over here. I have simply expanded the IJKs on the right side. Okay, so let me just show it in another way. So uh, let me write down capital W in this co in any coordinate system. It has zero W one two W one three minus W one two zero W two three minus W one three minus W two three and zero. So what we are saying by this mapping between these two sets is that, well, consider the first one, capital E1 is minus W23. That means that this creature is actually the negative of the first component of the vector. The second one, E2 is W13. This one is same as the second component of the vector. And the final one, is the negative of the third component of the vector w3. Okay, that is all I have done. So, the mapping is over here, if I wanted to now map, the mapping is w12 is mapped to minus w3, w13 is mapped to w2 and w23 is mapped to 
minus w1 okay so that's how it is being done as i said the, there were many mappings and i didn't simply map these two i did something slightly more complex so that i could have this nice way of understanding the operation of the skew symmetric tensor on any vector so that's my claim if you define small w by this then the operation of the skew symmetric tensor on any vector a will be the cross product of this small w with a provided small w is equal to this uh, complex kind of uh, mapping okay so what i will do is i will prove this to you okay so okay let's start the proof so uh, let's compute w cross a well from a formula that we had earlier w cross a can be written as epsilon p q r w p a q e r right so i have chosen my coordinate system to be something with capital e i as unit vectors okay what i now i am going to invoke this formula let me write it over here that w is minus epsilon i j k w j k e i okay by 2 so this implies that the ith component of the vector w is minus epsilon i j k capital w j k make it capital over 2 right all right so what I am going to do now is I am going to replace W P with by using this, okay? Replacing I with P. So I will get W cross A vector W cross A is minus epsilon P Q R epsilon I J K over two capital W J K A Q E R. All right, all right. What I have now is two epsilons hitting each other oh I made a mistake uh, this should now be not I it should be P because I am replacing W P plus an I so that I will get mapped to a P okay so now what I have is I have two epsilons hitting each other and we know that when alternating tensors are contracted you will use epsilon delta identity which I will write here delta q j delta q j to delta r k minus delta q k delta r j w j k a q e r okay so now what I will do is that I will uh, if I open this bracket up and evaluate these terms separately so let me do that delta q j delta r k w j what's this creature over here that is supposed to be w j k capital w j k a q e r and then again half delta q k delta r j capital W J K A Q E R okay so I've got lots of W's over here so what I'm going to do therefore is that uh, I'm going to start contracting so Q J J K so that means so here's a Q here's a J so what I'm going to do is that this goes away and makes this to be J r k r okay that means this goes away and takes this to be k all right what about the next one q k that's a q so get rid of this replace q by k r j r get rid of this replace r by j so in the end let me kind of make it a scrolling view so that we can simply see what's happening so this becomes minus w j k a j e k half minus half 
uh, got to be careful i think i made a sign error the, the second one this one will be a plus because there is a minus sign here so plus half w j k a k e j now we know that w j k is equal to minus w k j so let's use that in the first term and we will get half w k j a j e k plus half w j k a k e j now what you know what you see is that k j are all dummy indices so in the first term i am going to swap k and j and i will get half w j k a k e j and the same thing right copy which is equal to w j k a k e j and i will leave you to prove that this is really w dot a hence proved so really w dot a is small w cross a provided small w is defined in this way so let me uh, let me end this uh, discussion with couple of remarks first thing that we have seen is that if i give you any skew symmetric tensor w then i can extract from it a vector small w and this is the formula for doing that and this small w is then called the axial vector of capital w which in shorthand notation we write like this small w is ax where ax is an operation of w the other thing is that if i give you any vector w small w then by relating the components of small w to the components of through this kind of a mapping i can create a skew symmetric tensor and the components of the skew symmetric tensor will be given by this formula which i am going to and this skew symmetric tensor is called the asym of w the anti symmetric tensor associated with small w okay so that's also an operation this asym okay so what we see is that from vectors we can create skew symmetric tensors and from a skew symmetric tensor we can extract a vector so that the operation of the skew symmetric tensor looks like the vector cross product okay so that's that so that's the end of this lecture and uh, so you must be feeling pretty good with tensor algebra but i must warn you that you are still only an expert in tensor algebra not everything <laughs>